it's Scott. And in this Give Me Five, it's best described as part two of what happens when I go ahead and try to clean out my office. And with that, in addition to finding, you remember from a previous Give Me Five, how we had the preserved and dissected sheep brain, and we got to touch on the different parts of the brain and the herniation of the brain, the brain stem, or some variation thereof. However, as I kept looking through the cabinets, I also went ahead and found this. And what's kind of neat about this is that we have a preserved sheep skull, but more importantly is when we take the top off. That's what I want to touch on in the next couple of minutes is just a quick review of when it comes to meninges. And remember, in school, we were taught meninges were the shrink wrapping of the brain and the spinal cord. And in school, we were taught, many of us remember that whole pad, otherwise known as pia, then arachnoid, then dura. And in reality, that's too much to remember. Because what's far more important to remember, especially in children, is number one, remember that exactly the same meninges, as we'll show you, that wrap your brain, also wrap your spinal cord. They're the same meninges. Number two, remember that the same fluid that flows through your brain also flows through your spinal cord. You don't have special spinal fluid and special brain cerebral spinal fluid. It's the same thing, meaning it goes from the brain back to the spinal cord and back up again. That's why it's so important in people if you do a spinal tap. Because your only goal is you want to get spinal fluid. Well, to do that, you could take a big needle and jab it through the skull into their head. And you could find the ventricle of the brain. Because remember, just like your heart has ventricles, your brain has ventricles as well. And if you were to go ahead, you can go ahead and stick a needle into the ventricle and get spinal fluid. Or a whole lot easier is we can go ahead and remember and do a spinal tap in the back. Because the same fluid that's in your back is also in your head. And why that's hugely important is in little kids. If you've got a little kid whose fontanelle is bulging through the roof, they are covered in a icky purple rash that doesn't blanch. They are actively seizing, looking as sick as a dog. Mom, with no medical training whatsoever, says I think this is meningitis. If this child is horribly sick and the fontanelle is bulging and you know everything is under pressure, doing a spinal tap at that moment may not be the smartest thing we ever decided to do. Because when you stick that big needle in, all of that fluid now under pressure squirts out. And that's a huge deal because now the brain can simply follow the fluid right out and down the hole. So when we take a look from the inside, this is what I want to go ahead and just quickly touch on is we're seeing a couple things. So as we go ahead and remove the skull, What's kind of neat is if you look at the brain that's still shrink wrapped right here, you see first of which this outer meninges. And remember this outer meninges right here is your dura mater, which comes from Latin meaning tough mother. And why that's kind of neat is you can literally take the dura mater and you can lift the entire brain and skull off and the dura mater doesn't rip. That's why it's such a huge deal when you've got a little kid that's got an epidural. Because epi means above and dura means dura. So when you have an arterial bleed that goes between this and the skull, nothing good is gonna come of this is the only thing that's gonna get squished is going to be the brain. So as we peel it back, there is your dura mater. When we take a look at the brain itself, if you can kind of make out, there's a little tiny film, like a little bit of shrink wrap or saran wrap that goes right over the top. And between the dura and the pia, you remember, is your arachnoid layer. And that comes from Latin meaning spider, because if you look under the microscope, you actually see little tiny, seemingly leg-like projections going down. 
Then, if we go all the way underneath the arachnoid layer, inside of all those little grooves and ridges of your brain, where they actually go in and out is going to be your pia matter. So in school, we memorized pia, then arachnoid, then dura mater, or tough mother out here on the outside. An epidural bleed above the dura, a subdural is underneath the dura, subarachnoid is under that little filmy layer, your arachnoid layer, and intracerebral means when you're bleeding inside of the brain itself. So if you remember nothing else, in school we memorized pia, then arachnoid, then dura. But far more important in real life, the same meninges that are in your head are also in your back. The same fluid that's in your head is also in your back. And if the pressure is sky high inside of the head, it's also sky high in your back. <laughs>